praying that the Lord will use His Word to encourage us and to, to challenge us as we ponder the Word of God. And we have two things to consider in our message. It is about give the best, amen, in life. As, as quotation says, life at its best is life with a test. A life that is untested is a life to be detested. You know, in our lesson, we will be talking about commitment, Christian growth, progress. Of course, we're talking about give the best in life. We know that you never more alive than when you are climbing a mountain. Fording a river, defeating, defeating a spiritual enemy, or doing something that requires your best. Sometimes uh, we yearn for the easy road, but that is not God's way. For we are for we were saved to learn to walk the heavenly way. Remember that the Lord is calling us forward. Amen. The Lord is calling us forward on, and onward. And doing what He has called us to do means using all the resources He places at our disposal. It is interesting to hear about player God Pair or any athlete speak after, after winning an important game. The player uh, always says something like this, I really wanted to be there in the tight spot. I wanted to be called upon when everything was on the line. That is what we all wish for. Yes, the best love, the test. They want to be when their decisions and action really matter. Now, how many of us look at our Christian life in this way? The reason many lead the Christian life so defeated is they are always looking for easy way to serve the Lord. Brethren, God uses those who desire to be in the middle of the action when the going gets tough. Look at Joshua, for example. Joshua, well, in his life at its best. When we look at him in our scripture today, remember that he is an old man advanced in years yet he is told that there must land yet to be taken of course if you remember Caleb when he went when uh, when he spied the land he was 45 years old then one generation had passed they are now at the opening. They are now in the place of uh, taking and getting what the Lord had promised. And he was already 85 years old at the time that he needed to take the promised land. Now, remember when we look at Joshua, the same thing. There is work for him to do, and God did not give him an easy chair and a nice view across, uh, across the mountain as a place of retirement. 
the Lord called upon Joshua to go and take the mountain designed just for him, even though it was a tall and difficult task. Siguro at his age, if Caleb was 85 years old, probably Joshua was of the same age or older than, than that age. Remember here, by the time we get to chapter 17, we find some of the people asking for an easier, easier way, but they will not get it. They have the allotment, and they are to go forth in the name of the Lord and carry out His work in that place. Now notice that in God's work, there is no easy place. Yes, there is peace. Ah, uh, in his will, but there is a call for a commitment and fidelity. Brethren, no matter how difficult the test or how high the mountain, you have to face it. Life, you see, is not easy for anyone. You may look at someone and think they are living the easy life, but you can see the, you can see the sorrow. You can see the trials. You can see the troubles they are dealing with each day. We need to accept our lot in life and learn to live life at its best in the midst, in the midst of God's will and way. Now, like what I said, let me share you two great principles. Number one, examination of our past. And number two, acceleration in your purpose. In our text, we know that God was pointing out many victories. He's pointing out many victories. Victories that he had already been accomplished through his people and because of his blessings. Now notice here that in Genesis, in, in verse 8, we could see that now Manasseh had the land of uh, Tap Tapua, but Tapua on the border of Manasseh belonged to the children of Ephraim. Now, verse 8 shows to be true. And this afternoon, we're looking in chapter 24, and here we see that Joshua reviewed the past experiences of God's people during his former days. <clears throat> Now as we look, a celebration of victories. <coughs> Under uh, examination of our past, we could see the celebration of victories. As Joseph spoke to the people, he was counting the blessings. You see, he was counting the blessings that God had given the people to the years. Siyempre pa naman eh, yung experience nila from the time he left Egypt to the wilderness and now they were uh, entering the promised land and uh, they have won a lot of battles along the way ng kanilang uh, paglalakbay. So we could see sometime we gain a measure of success and begin to think we did it all in our own strength. If God were to pull back the curtain, we would see that He was making a way for us all the time. He was the one making the way for all of us. He called for the best from us, but the success required His hand and His power. Amen? The success requires God's hand and God's power, not them. Looking at the circumstances tends to please us into a standstill. But notice, Christian, but trusting God and giving Him our best leads to give to leads to incredible victories. Now, Shepe, you may think as 
these people, before they left Egypt, they were not warriors. They were slaves. They were servants. How can they won the battle if, if they are not as skilled warriors or skilled? It takes the help from God. Amen. It takes God to work and to help them and lead them into such victory. Now remember, everyone here has a measure of sorrow in life and can seem very difficult for you. But notice here, I'm sure you've had victories from the Lord as well. Amen. You have victories. If you are a Christian, you have experienced the greatest victory of all. The new birth. The new birth in Jesus Christ. We cannot wind our way to heaven. We must rejoice and make ourselves available to God so that He can continue to use us for His cause. Now imagine this little life will be over soon. But eternity does not end. Eternity does not end. But when celebrate your victories, thank God for His protection. Tell Him you are ready for whatever He has in mind for you in this life. That is, that is what it means to celebrate your victories in the Lord. Begin from the time of salvation. And how the Lord guided you along the way of your Christian life. And how He helps you in times of need, in times of difficulties, in times of sorrow, in times of hardship. Mga kapatid, those impossible thing for us to overcome but by the help and the grace of God you know you overcome it not in your own might not in your own power not in your own wisdom not in your own strength but by the grace of God maybe you will be reminded uh, of the things that the Lord has given you oh thank God I overcome this kind of difficulties in life. Oh Lord, thank God, I overcome uh, this kind of problems that one of the hardest problems I, I have ever in my life. Christian, we know that we have a celebration of victories in our life and we have a reason to be thankful. So remember, Joshua was speaking to the people in our text today. And he was reminding them uh, of all that God had done for them. Looking back on past victories. Does not focus on the hardship, but on the triumph. Now we must remember, brethren, God's blessing from the past when we are going through today's bodies and difficulties, one day, when we rejoice in the presence of our Lord, we will forget all the sorrows and pains. But we will never forget all the joys and victories that God has given us. So let's just begin celebrating right here, right now. No matter what we are facing in the moment, we have a reason to celebrate. Because overcome the situation, the first uh, thing that you overcome, that you won, is when you came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Probably others are <coughs> mga struggles, mo, problems difficulties, trials. We, have, we are, uh, sabi na natin, facing different kinds of battles in life. But you, we, we won all those by the grace of our Lord. Amen. By the help of God. There are, there are, uh, there are fights, there are battles in our life that it's hard to win. 
without the help of God. Now we know that even the nation Israel, it's hard for them to win the battle without God empowering them. Amen. Without God helping them. Without the hand of God. Listen. Then let's consider the expectation of victories. As we celebrate, we must remember that there is much yet to do. Amen? Yes, you succeeded. You see the power of God. He, it is mighty. It is powerful. So listen. We must see all the victories that are waiting to be won in all the land that is waiting to be possessed. That is what Joshua was trying to tell God's people in our scripture passage today. He was rehearsing past, but he was also renewing their viewpoint of the future. Because you have more to come along the way of your Christian life. Amen. Right now, you have a reason to, to be to rejoice. You have a reason to celebrate. Thank God. If I'm not, if the Lord, uh, if, if the Lord didn't save me, if I die, I know that I'm not heaven-bound person. Oh, thank God. Uh, because of Him, I am a new person. You know, imagine, He changed me. Little by little, until some time, I realized that in my past, it is my battle that I cannot even overcome. But by God's help, by God's grace. Now listen, I have, we have a reason to celebrate. As Christian, surely we have lots of plans in our lives that we need to settle in. But listen carefully. In our personal lives, we see the need for change and progress. Amen. In our express, when he said, forgetting those things which are behind, everything forth unto those things which are before. You see, Paul had his mind set on God's leadership and blessing in the future. He knew that it is it was his responsibility to press on. Amen. Move forward, brothers. Continue. Uh, uh, in, in your in continue or move forward towards our goal. Now listen, if he expected the future to fully unfold in his life, we must press on. To grow in Christ. Amen. Butay man natin ng sa kinalalagyan natin. Let us move forward. Let us go on. Let us move on. Let us be mature to see the greater task that the Lord that the Lord that are awaiting for us if we will become mature and we will see the very need and the work that is awaiting for each of us. And Christian, expect something wonderful for the Lord in your life and ministry for Him. Never dwell in the past defeats or gloat over former triumphs. Look up and look forward. That is God's way to lead life at its best. Mga kapatid, you can still expect more victories. Amen. But at this point of time, not from the start of new birth, but from the time of your growth in your Christian faith, there are certain victories that we need to face, that we need to fight, that we need to overcome. But this time, we need to overcome it. Even through the grace of God, but in a mature way. Now, tignan po natin ang second thing, not only celebration of victories, expectation of victories, because there, there are more victories. All we have to do is forget those past victories and move forward to our goal. 
So listen, in our second point, acceleration in your purpose. Joshua was called by God to renew his purpose before the Lord. To keep and keeping on in the Lord's work. Keep and keeping on. Life for God is not a choice between the good or the bad. It is rather a choice between the good things or the better things. In fact, we can say that it is a choice between better thing and best thing. Joshua was already a great man when he heard his call from the Lord. Isaiah was a great man when he saw God high and lifted up and heard holy, holy, holy from the, from the throne room. Now remember, never believe that you are too old to matter or that your best days are behind you. God can still use you. Amen. Kaya nga, ang challenge eh, that's why the, the challenge of Solomon eh, to remember God, remember God in the days of the youth. Now, youth does not mean you young people. The youth, there it means while you are in, this, in your own strength, you have to do, you have a capacity in your own strength to do whatever the Lord wants you to do in your Christian faith. Now brethren, never believe that you are too old to, uh, to matter or that your best days are behind you. Brethren, as I've gotten older, I've learned to appreciate the ministry of prayer as never before. Amen. Prayer. Most of the time, neglected. Especially nowadays and many Christians today. May I make a sabihan, a prayerful one is a powerful one. Amen. A prayerful person is a powerful person. A prayerful <clears throat> church is a powerful church. A prayerful family is a powerful family. Brethren, prayer is important in our Christian faith. We must choose to do our best for our Lord because He has given His best for us. Amen. He has given His best for us. Besides all this, the older we are, the closer we are to home. Amen? The older. Which is true. When you are in 60s, 70s, or 80s, Although, whether we like it or not, we are closer than home, than the 30s, or the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, of course. Although we know that God has an appointment. Our death is an appointment. Na talagang, it's your time whether you are young or you are old. It will happen to a person. But to be practical, it means the older you are, the closer you are to be home with the Lord. Christian, look at Paul in the New Testament. He want to apprehend that for which he was apprehended. May I suggest that there are three areas in which we can grow the most. Number one, in our relationship with the Lord. Number two, in our responsibilities for the Lord. And number three, in our resources from the Lord. In our relationship to the Lord, this would be the Apostle Paul's desire that I may know you. How can you know that if you have no chance to open your Bible? Amen. How can you know him if you do not have time 
for worship, for Sunday school, for prayer meeting, for fellowship, for any spiritual activities that His names are being mentioned, are being studied. Even in your personal devotion, you, you neglect this important matter in our, in our Christian faith. Now listen, that I may know Him. Now remember that God is always unveiling Himself to His people. No matter how long you serve Him or how much you think you know about Him, there is more to experience. Those who never become satisfied with where they are in their walk with God always have more power, beauty, and grace revealed to them. Oh, that we may know Him better in life and in work. So, in our relationship with the Lord, it should be our desire. I want to know you more, Lord. Because Apostle Paul's desire is that I, that I may know Him. So he set God as his priority. Amen? In his personal life. Now, my question this morning or this afternoon, does God is your priority? Or less? Who is in, in the top priority of your life? Girlfriend? Boyfriend? Work? Uh, then, can I, it's easy to give up God because He was not at the top list. You know? Now listen, in our relationship to the Lord, that I may know Him. Now, number two, in our responsibilities for the Lord, this means to complete the full service which He has for us. How many of us can say that we are doing our best for Christ. We're doing our best for Christ. Well, I'm doing the best I can. Really? Very few people on this earth do the best they can at anything. To give all you have and leave no energy or skill unused when you cross the finish line. Some of us witness many runners who, coll who collapse as soon as they cross the finish line. I remember a story of Nigeria. He joined and entered into the, uh, how, how do you call that? He was an athlete and he runs in ma marathon, a long, long walk. So that, that Nigerian joined on that race, the marathon. Energies needed, you know, and until such time, uh, that race, Maryland claimed the winner. And the Maryland claimed the winner, but still, uh, the Colosseum should be closed because it's already night, it's already evening, and it's already dark. But they cannot close the Colosseum because there, there, there was one missing person. You see? And then they decided to the, 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 the people decided to close the Coliseum because maybe uh, no one will well, and that thing not knowing before they close the line some a, a, a little bit farther they saw someone walking still walking still walking close to the penis line and then when he reached the penis line he collapsed he finished his course he finished the race 
the descent before him, but on that finish line, he collapsed. You know, at least he never win the race. But the good thing is, he finished the race that he set before him. Christian, in our responsibilities, how many of us are doing our responsibilities and finishing it? God wants us to move forward. That's the purpose of God. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So, that is what God is calling us to do. And number last, in our resource on the Lord. All we need he has provided. Thanks be unto God, but we are appropriating that which He has given us uh, for His cause and glory, you see, and have power that it is not uh, our own. Brethren, when we step, when we step out in, in faith to serve Him, He also steps in to provide what we need. Amen. When I start, when I first start the work in Iba Sambales, when, when I realized that my, my financial support is not much for my need, you know, what I remember during the time of my training in the ministry or in the seminar league, we call them called this. When you follow the Lord in the ministry, God is in His own way of providing. I follow the Lord. I serve the Lord not because I want to have much. I serve the Lord because I was called to serve the Lord. And, you know, some Christians say, I wish I could do what a person is doing. Well, if you gave as much of yourself to God as that person is giving, perhaps you would be able to do just that. Use all He gives you for His sake, and you will never regret having done so. From the time I stepped in full time in the ministry, sometime in 1982. Even up to now, I've never seen and never realized that there is lacking in my life. Yes, along the way of my personal experience in the ministry, I struggle. There are difficulties. There are problems. There are as I mean, then, there are obstacles. There is something uh, happening in in my life. But I saw the hands of God on time providing the necessary needs in my life. So mga kapatid, I'm older now. I'm young when I started in the ministry. My service in the ministry is more than the years that I surrendered my life unto the Lord. It's double. It's almost, it's double. But never I say, Lord, nadudong puta ko, I'm sad to follow you. But I still rejoicing. I, I still want to climb more mountains. I still want to fight more battles. I still want to, to have more missions started. More buildings, uh, projects to be, to be operated and to be built. You know why? Because that's our calling. And Christian, this happens to Joshua. Remembering past victories, remembering the power of God working, inspired him to move on 
and to continue on. A cycle good. God will often hesitate to bless until you have no hesitation in doing His will. Those who wait to have what they need before they surrender never receive for God's hand what they are missing and end up realizing when it is too late. God is calling us to get up, look up, and move out in His name. It is His will and responsibility to meet the needs we have in order to accomplish all He is asking to do. Amen. In, in the imagine of even of planning to come over in this area, I never dreamed to be in this place. But the Lord brought me. The Lord, for what purpose? His purpose, so that through me, I could be a blessing to our more missions, open missionaries and missions in the Philippines. Do you nakita through my experience? Here, hindi ko madali yung pinagdaanan. But you know, walang mahilap sa Panginoon. Amen? There is no hard thing when you follow the Lord. There is no mountain that we cannot climb. Amen? All of those are simple when you follow the Lord. Obey and listen to His voice. May, 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 may the Lord God bless our hearts in our message today.